to remember Governor Strickland? Well, I hope people remember me as being a hardworking, honest, uh, sincere governor who cared about people, didn't put himself above the people that he was uh, trying to serve. I hope they remember me as someone who cared about education and health care and energy and who worked hard to lay a foundation for economic growth even during very difficult uh, economic times. And uh, you know, someone who was honest and cared and as, uh, you know, as I frequently referred to in my speeches, someone who uh, Tried to live by the ammunition of uh, what's required of us to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly. What's your legacy? Everybody talks about a legacy. What's your legacy? I don't know what my legacy will be. I, you know, we've done some good things in energy. I think we've done a lot of good things uh, in education at every level. I think we, uh, you know, we're able to successfully expand and renew the Third Frontier program. Um, so I, I hope my legacy will be um, that of uh, dealing with the most severe economic recession in 80 or so years and doing it responsibly while protecting uh, Ohioans um, f from the devastating consequences that, uh, quite frankly, uh, have befallen many other states. Do you have any regrets? I have, I have a few regrets, not many, but, uh, but a few. Such as? Well, I regret appointing Tom Charles as uh, Inspector General. Um, uh, and I say that because I think um, Kathy Collins Taylor was a good, decent, honest person who was maligned um, in his report and was uh, subjected to a politically motivated uh, Senate hearing uh, that led to her rejection. Uh, and she's a good person. And uh, she was accused of uh, illegal behavior. She was accused of perjury. Uh, and when the prosecutor looked at that, uh, he decided that there was no justification for a perjury charge. And so uh, I find it very troubling that a good person who gave her life to law enforcement and served, I think, about 30 years uh, as a police officer, dangerous work, uh, was, uh, was treated so badly. You spoke highly of Tom Charles when you did reappoint him in that, I remember there was a statement that you sent out at the time. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, um, Tom Charles obviously has you know, a long career in, in law enforcement. I did not know him personally. Um, uh, and uh, I, I don't, you know, what I say uh, in a negative way is not, uh, I hope it's not, you know, taken personally. But I'm, you know, I'm just looking at the fact that, uh, that I think um, he contributed to a good and decent, honest person being injured. And I regret that. If you if you'd known that you were only going to have four years, is there anything you would have done differently? I don't think so. Uh, I worked hard. I think we accomplished a lot. Um, you know the the most recent information that's come out saying that Ohio is one of only two states that has had a declining rate of unemployment for eight months in a row. Only two out of fifty states. Um, 21 states had unemployment rates that went up last month. Ohio's continued to go down. And um, so I think, uh, I think we've laid a good foundation for future growth uh, in Ohio. And um, I feel good about that. Uh, even under the most difficult circumstances, We've continued to invest in education and in new energy uh, production and research. We've uh, been able to uh, invest heavily in our infrastructure. And um, 
So Ohio is seeing jobs created and we'll see more jobs created in the future if we stay on track. Um, I think the economy is still very fragile and I think we need to be careful that we don't do anything that would provide a shock to the economy and perhaps lead us to a, uh, a double dip recession. What, would, what, what kinds of things would, could do that? I think, uh, I think severe, uh, severely cutting back on investing um, in our people um, could do that. That concerns me at the federal level, um, but it also concerns me at the state level. Uh, I think uh, 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 during this recovery period, as we're trying to deal with the after effects of, of this terrible, terrible recession, that um, the economy is still fragile. And uh, if the federal government pulls back uh, on investing in job creating activities, and if at each of the state levels, Ohio being one of 50, um, if states uh, find themselves cutting back severely, uh, it could have a, uh, a depressive effect on the national economy that would be harmful to every state, including Ohio. What kind of investments are you talking about when you say job creating activities at the state level? Well, I, uh, continuing to invest in education, um, continuing to uh, make sure that the, uh, the human service programs are adequately funded, Medicaid uh, as an example, uh, to make sure that we're able to keep teachers and police officers and firefighters on the job. Um, all of those things uh, will have an effect upon the generalized economy, I believe. And um, uh, much of the talk now is about cutting and uh, reducing investments. And uh, that, that concerns me. Do you have any better handle now, as you're getting ready to leave office, on what kind of budget hole the state's looking at in the next biennium? Is it really going to be as high as $8 billion? Well, um, there are several factors involved in that. It could be as high as $8 billion. It could be higher than that. I mean, uh, Mr. Kasich's decision to uh, institute the final phase of the state income tax reduction, which I postponed to uh, balance the last budget, could actually increase the deficit by an additional uh, $800 to $1 billion. Are you talking about if he makes it retroactive or... No, just reinstating that. No, if he goes, yes, if he goes forward with it uh, and, uh, and reinstates it, as he has indicated that he plans to do. If he were to uh, eliminate the, uh, the estate tax, that would even further uh, increase the deficit. So uh, I think it's difficult to know because um, there are things you can do to reduce the deficit, but there are also things you can do to actually increase the deficit going forward, and I'm not sure what actions the, the administration are likely to take. You've said repeatedly you don't think that this is a good time to raise taxes given the way the economy is. Can that budget problem in your mind be dealt with without some kind of tax increase? Well, I think, uh, I think that's difficult to answer right, right now. Um, raising taxes, in my judgment, in the middle of a recession, uh, can be depressive to the economy, um, but quite frankly, at the federal level, I think they could have and should have uh, not continued the tax cuts for people make over a million dollars, and I don't know that it would have had any effect at all. So, uh, but I think I, th I think raising taxes on struggling working folks right now would be very, very, uh, very difficult. However. Uh, you know, when you're in public office, you're continually confronted with decisions um, and, and, you know, and, and, and trade-offs. And um, what I was determined to do and, and uh, what I would have done had I been governor is to make sure that we did not renege on our commitment to education and that we did not allow the most vulnerable citizens of our state, uh, basically those who deploy, uh, you know, rely upon Medicaid, uh, to go without, and uh, I was very clear that I, um, you know, did not take uh, anything off the table when it came to 
meeting those responsibilities. You've worked hard on education reform, um, some other initiatives. What 